Chavales. Now, now, friend Eros. Where is Mike Anthony? He's walking in the garden. There's hard news come with this. He would desire your presence. I'll bring you to him. If it be love indeed, tell me how much. There's beggary in the love that can be reckoned. <laughs> I'll set the bounds how far to be beloved. Then must thou needs find out new heaven, new earth. Hey, but this dotage of our general is all full of the measure. His captain's heart, which in the scuffles of great fights had burst the buckles on his breast, grenades all temper, has become the bellows and the fan to cool a gypsy's lust. You see in him the triple pillar of the world transformed into a strumpet's fool. <laughs> news, my good lord, from Rome. What news from Rome? Let Rome in type of melt! White arch of the raged empire fall. Here is my space. Kingdoms are clay. Our dungy earth alike feeds beast as man. The nobleness of life is to do thus. Speak not to us. Caesar with Mark Antony prized so slight? Sir, sometimes when he is not Antony, he comes too short of that great quality which still should go with Antony. Alexis! Oh, sweet Alexis! Where's the soothsayer that you praised so to the Queen? Soothsayer! the man. His you, sir, that know things. In nature's infinite book of secrecy. A little I can read. Show him your hand. <laughs> good, sir. Give me good fortune. I make not, but foresee. Pray then, foresee me one. You shall be yet far fairer than you are. Well, he means in flesh. <laughs> hey, hear him. Oh, good now. Some excellent fortune. Let me be married to three kings in a forenoon and widow them all. <laughs> Let me have a child at fifty. Then marry me with Octavia Caesar and companion me with my mistress. <laughs> <laughs> You shall outlive the lady whom you serve. Excellent. I love long life better than figs. You have seen and proved a fairer form of fortune than that which is to come. <laughs> a fool! I forgive thee for a witch!
then? Fulvia, your wife, first came into the field. Against my brother Lucius. But then they joined their forces against Caesar, who soon from Italy drove them. Well, what worse? The nature of bad news infects the teller. When it concerns the fool or coward, arm things that are past that done with me. Tis thus who tells me true, though in his tale like death I hear him as he fluttered. Labienus, this is stiff news, hath with his path in force extended Asia. From Euphrates his conquering banner shook, from Syria to Lydia and to Ionia, whilst... Antony, you would say? My lord. Speak to me, home. Mince not that general tongue. Name Cleopatra she is called in Rome. Taunt me with Fulvia's phrase. From Sicyon, how's the news? Uh, the Lady Fulvia, your wife, is dead. Where died she? In Sicyon. Very well. There's a great spirit gone. Thus did I desire it. But our contempt doth often hurl from us. We wish it ours again. She's good being gone. I must from this enchanting queen break off. I lose myself in dotage. In a moment! It's your pleasure, sir. I must with haste from hence. Why, then, we kill all our women. Oh, we see how mortal an unkindness is to them. If they suffer our departure, death's the word. I must be gone. Uh, under a compelling occasion, let women die. We'll pity to cast them away for nothing. Though between them and a great cause, they should be esteemed. Uh, Cleopatra, catching but the least noise of this, dies instantly. Oh, I've seen her die twenty times upon far poor a moment. I do think death commits some loving act upon her. She had such a celerity in dying. She is cunning past man's thought. Alack, sir, no. Her passions are made of nothing but pure love. Oh, we cannot call her winds and waters, sighs and tears. There are greater storms and tempests than almanacs can report. Would I have never seen her? Oh, sir, you had then left unseen a wonderful piece of work. Oh, he is dead. Sir? My wife is dead. Fulvia. Dead. Why, sir? Give the gods a thankful sacrifice. Uh, if there were no more women but Fulvia, then had you indeed a cut and the case to be lamented. This grief is crowned with consolation. The business she has broached with us in Rome cannot endure my absence. And the business you have broached here cannot be without you. Especially that of Cleopatra's, which only depends on your presence. No more light answers. They're not alone the death of Fulvia, but letters too from Rome petition us at home. Much is breathing. Sextus Pompey is given a dare to Caesar. Commands the empire of the sea. The side of the world's in danger. Let our officers take notice of our purpose. Now you see, Lepidus, from Alexandria this is the news. He fishes, drinks, and wastes the lamps of night in revel. Hardly gave audience or stopped to think he had partners. You shall find there a man who is the sum of all men's faults. Noble Octavius, his faults in him seem as the stars of heaven. 
more fiery by night's blackness. Hereditary rather than purchased, what he cannot change than what he chooses. You are too indulgent. Let's grant it is not amiss to roll in Cleopatra's bed, to give a kingdom for a mirth, to sit and keep the turn of tippling with a slave, to reel the streets at noon and stand with knaves that smell of sweat. Say this becomes him, as his composure must be rare indeed, whom these things cannot blemish. Yet, must this in no way excuse his faults when we do bear so great weight in his likeness? Oh, here's more news. Your biddings have been done, Miss Noble Caesar. Pompey is strong at sea. And it appears he is beloved of those that only appeared Caesar. I should have known no less. No vessel can peep forth, but is as soon taken as seen. Pompey's name strikes more than could his war resisted. <sighs> Leave your lascivious wassails. When he once was beaten from Medina, at his heels did famine follow. He did drink the stale of horses and the gilded puddle that beasts would cough at. All this was born still like a soldier, with patience more than savages could suffer. It's pity of him. That his shames quickly drive him to Rome. This time we both did show ourselves at the field. Pompey thrives in our idleness. Tomorrow, Caesar, I shall be able to inform you rightly both what by sea and land. Which encounter it is my business too. Farewell. Farewell, my lord. Great gods be just, they shall assist the deeds of justest men. No worthy Pompey, they'll not deny you. I shall do well. The people love me, and the sea is mine. My powers are present. Mark Antony in Egypt sits at dinner, and will make no wars outdoors. Caesar gets money where he loses hearts. Lepidus flatters both, but neither cares for him. Caesar and Lepidus are in the field. The mighty strength they carry. I have you this, tis false. From Silvius, sir. He dreams. I know they are in Rome together looking for Antony. And all the charms of love tie up the libertine in a field of feast, keep his brain fuming. Let Cleopatra sharpen his appetite. Oh! Pompey! Oh no, Marius! This is most certain, sir! Mark Antony is every hour in Rome expected! Venus, I did not think this amorous lecher would have donned his helm for such a petty war. His soldiership is twice the other twain. So our stirring can from the lap of Egypt's widow pluck the air lust we have in Antony. I cannot think Caesar and Antony shall well agree together. His wife that's dead did trespass to Caesar. His brother warred upon him. I know not, Minas. Were it not that we stand up against them all, to were plain they draw their swords between themselves. <laughs>
Good evening, Barbus. Entreat your captain to soft and gentle speech. I shall entreat him to answer like himself. If Caesar move here, let Antony look over Caesar's head and speak as loud as Mars. Your speech is passion, but pray you stir no embers up. Welcome to Rome. Thank you. Sit. Sit, sir. There, then. I learn you take things ill which are not so, or being concern you not. I must be laughed at if but for nothing or a little I should say myself offended. And with you chiefly the world, when to sound your name it not concern me. My being in Egypt, Caesar, what was it to you? No more than my residing here at Rome might be to you in Egypt. Your wife and brother made wars upon me, and you were the word of war. You do mistake your business. My brother made his wars alike against us both. Of this, my letters before did satisfy you. You'll patch a quarrel. It must not be with this. You patched up your excuses. Not so, not so. I'm your partner in this cause. You have broken the article of your oath. Soft, Caesar. Which you shall never have time to charge me with. Caesar. No, Lepidus. Let him speak. The honor is sacred, which it talks on now. Supposing that I lacked it. On Caesar, the article of my oath. To lend me arms and aid when I required them, the which you both denied. Neglected, rather. Truth is, my wife, to help me out of Egypt, made these wars here. For which I do herewith ask pardon on my honor. Nobly spoken. If it might please you, enforce no further the griefs between you. Forget them quite. <laughs> Be, we shall remain in friendship. Yet, if I knew what bond would hold us staunch from edge to edge of the world, I would pursue it. Give me leave, Caesar. Speak, Agrippa. You have a sister by the mother's side, admired Octavia. Great Mark Antony is now a widower. Say not so, Agrippa. If Cleopatra heard you, your reproof were well deserved of rashness. I'm not married, Caesar. Let me hear Agrippa further speak. To hold you in perpetual amity, to make you brothers and to knit your hearts with an unslipping knot, take Antony Octavia to his wife. Her beauty claims no less a husband than the best of men. Her virtue and her general graces speak that which none else can utter. By this marriage, all little jealousies which now seem great would then be nothing. Caesar speak. Not till he hears how Antony is touched with what is spoke already.
power is in Agrippa, if I would say Agrippa be it so, to make this good. The power of Caesar. From this hour, the hearts of brothers govern in our loves and sway our great designs, huh? Let me have your hand. There's my hand. A sister I bequeath you, whom no brother did ever love so dearly. Let her live to join our kingdoms and our hearts and never fly off our loves again. Happily, amen. I did not think to draw my sword against Pompey, for he has laid great courtesies of late upon me. Time calls upon us. Of us must Pompey presently be sought, or else he seeks out us. Where lies he? About the Mount Messina. What is his strength? By land, great and increasing. But by sea, he is an absolute master. Would we spoke together? History for it. Yet, uh, here we put ourselves in arms. Let's uh, finish the business we have spoke of. With most gladness. And to invite you to my sister's view. With us straight, I'll lead you. Good Barbus. Welcome from Egypt, sir. Honorable Agrippa. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Antony, Octavia is a blessed lottery to him. <laughs> Madam, give me to drink, Mandragora. Why, Madam? that I may sleep out of this great gap of time my Antony is away. You think of him too much. Oh, it is treason. Madam, I trust not so. You, you're not Marian. What your highness wish? Not now to hear you sing. I take no pleasure in what a eunuch has. <laughs> Have you affections? Yes, precious. Indeed? Not indeed. For I can do nothing. <laughs> to have I fierce affections. And think what Venus take with me. <laughs> oh, John. Where think you he is now? Stands he or sits he? Or does he walk? Or is he on his horse? Oh, happy horse to bear the weight of Antony. Do bravely, horse, for know you whom you move. The demi atlas of this earth. before we fight. Most meet the first we come to words. So let us know if you'll tie up your discontented sword and carry back to Sicily much tall youth that else must perish here. To you all three, the senators alone of this great world, chief factors for the gods, this it is has made me wreak my navy. I mean to scourge the ingratitude that despiteful Rome cast on my noble father. Be pleased to tell us for this is from the present, 
how you take the offers we have sent you. There's the point. You have made me offer of Sicily, Sardinia. And I must rid the sea of pirates. Then to send measures of wheat to Rome, this greed upon to part with unhacked swords. That's our offer. No, then. I came before you here, a man prepared to take this offer. But Mark Antony has put me to some impatience. Though I lose the praise of it by telling. When Caesar and your brother were at war, your mother came to Sicily and did find her welcome friendly. I have heard it, Pompey. And am well studied for a liberal thanks which I do owe you. Let me have your hand. I never thought, sir, to have met you here. The bed's knee east to soft. But thanks to you who called me sooner than my purpose here, for I've gained by it. Well met here. I hope so, Lepidus. <coughs> Thus we are agreed. <laughs> we'll feast each other ere we part. And let's draw lots who shall begin. But first or last, your fine Egyptian cookery shall have the fame. I've heard that Julius Caesar grew fat when feasting there. You have heard much, sir. I have fair meaning, sir. And I have heard Apollodorus carried the point, I pray you. A certain queen to Caesar in a mattress. I know you. How goes it, soldier? I've never hated you. I have seen you fight when I have envied your behavior. Sir, I never loved you much. But I praised you. Aboard my galley, I invite you all. Will you come, lords? <laughs> we came here to fight with you. For my part, I am sorry to stand to a drinking. Pompey, does this day laugh away his fortune? If he do, sure he cannot weep it back again. You have said, sir. We look not for Mark Antony here. Pray you, is he married to Cleopatra? Caesar's sister is called Octavia. True, sir. She was the wife of Caius Marcellus. But she is now the wife of Marcus Antonius. Pray, sir. It is true. Then is Caesar and he forever knit together. I would not prophesy, sir. Octavia is of a holy, cold, and still conversation. Who would not have his wife so? Not Mark Antony. He will to his Egyptian dish again. And thus it may be. Come, sir, will you aboard? Take your seat, I do beseech you, Captain Ant. Hear me speak a word. Forbear me till now. He is to see that. I could well forbear. Go hang, sir. Hang away. For the sake of merit, you will hear me rise from your couch. I think you're mad. Will you be lord of all the world? What say you? Will you be lord of the whole world? That's twice. Show me which way. These uh, 
three world sharers, these competitors, are in your vessel. Let me cut the cable, and when we are put off, fall to their throats. All there is yours. Oh, this you should have done, not have spoken. The meat is villain here. You would have been good service. Being done unknown, I should have found it afterwards well done. But it must condemn it now. Invest and drink. Pledge it for him, Poppy. Bell him away! Ha! My brave Emperor! We still dance now. You are Egyptian back and now. Let's have it then, good soldier. Would you more? <laughs> Good brother, let's ashore. Uh, uh, try one sure. Good night. What? <laughs> uh, Come, sir. Give us your hand. Go and sleep. We are friends. Come down into the boat. the trade in love. Let it alone. Let's to billiards come, Chuck. No, oh, Miss Shaw. Let's play with margin. As well a woman with a unit played as with a woman. <laughs> come. You play with me, sir. As well as I can, mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Wheel to the river. There my music playing, father. I will betray tawny thin fishes. And as I draw them up, I think them everyone an Antony and say, <laughs> You are caught. There was merry when you waited on your angling. When your diver did place a salt fish on his hook, which he with fervency <laughs> drew up. <laughs> that time. Oh, times. Oh, from Italy. Madam. Madam. Antony dead. If you say so, villain, you kill your mistress. But well and free, if so thou yield him. There's gold. First, madam, he is well. Why, there's more gold. But fear a mark. We used to say the dead are well. Bring it to that, the gold I give thee will I melt and pour down thy ill-uttering throat. Good madam, hear me. Well, go to. I will. But there's no goodness in thy face. Well, please, you hear me. I have a mind to strike thee, thou speakst. 
Yet if you say Antony lives, is well, is friends with Caesar, and not captive to him... Madam, he's well. Well said. And friends with Caesar. Thou art an honest man. Caesar and he are greater friends than ever. Make thee a fortune from me. But yet, madam. I do not like but yet. Pretty friend. Pour out the pack of matter to my ear. The good and bad together. He's friends with Caesar. In state of health, thou sayest, and thou sayest free. Free, madam? No, I made no such report. He's bound unto Octavia. For what good turn? For the best turn in the bed. <gasps> Madam, he's married to Octavia. The most infectious pestilence upon thee! Good madam, for reason! Don't say you hens! Oh, villain! Oh, 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 oh. Thou shalt be quick with wine, stewed in brine! Gracious madam, either do bring the news, make not the match. Say it is not so. A province I will give thee and make thy fortunes proud. He's married, madam. <gasps> Rogue! Live to it Good madam, keep yourself within yourself. The man is innocent. Some innocent scape not the thunderbolts. Melt Egypt into Nile. And kindly creatures turn all disturbance. Call the slave again. Though I am mad, I will not bite him. Call! Oh! He is a fear to come. I will not hurt him! His hands do lack an ability. They do strike a meaner than myself. Though it be honest, it is never good to bring bad news. Is he married? I cannot hate thee worse than I do if thou again say yes. He's married, madam. The gods confound thee. Dost thou hold this too? Madam, should I lie? Oh, I would thou didst, though half my Egypt were submerged and made a cistern for scales, snakes. Get thee hence. I crave your highness pardon. He is married. Madam, he's married to Octavia. Is he gone? which thou hast brought from Rome is all too to hear for me. Iris. Just no matter. Go to the fellow good Alexis. It did report the feature of Octavia. Her years. Let him not leave her the colour of her hair. Bring me word quickly. Let him forever go! Oh. Let him not. Mardian, do tell Alexis, bring me word how tall she is. Madam. Praising Antony, I have dispraised Caesar many times, madam. I am paid for it now.
You take from me a great part of myself. Use me well in Sister, prove such a wife as my thoughts make you. The Jove of power made me most weak, your reconciler. Wars twixt you twain will be as if the world should leave. Antony, far better might we two have loved without this means, if by us both she be not cherished. Make me not offended in your distrust. I have said. So. Well, the brothers parted. They dispatched with Pompey. He is gone. We are for Athens. Octavia weeps to part from Rome. Caesar is sad. And Lepidus, since Pompey's feast, is troubled with the green sickness. <laughs> No further, sir. So, the gods keep you and make the hearts of Romans serve your ends. Farewell, my dearest sister. Fare you well. The elements be kind to you. My noble brother. Oh, very well. <laughs> uh, the April's in her eyes. It is love's spring. It needs the showers to bring it on. No, sweet Octavia. You should hear from me still. Oh. Be cheerful. Come, sir, come. I'll wrestle with you in my strength of love. Look, here I have you. Thus I let you go and give you to the gods. Adieu. Be happy. Let all the number of the stars Give light to thy fair way. Farewell. 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 Where is the fellow? Arthur feared to come. Go to, go to. Come either, sir. Come you near. Most gracious majesty. Did you behold Octavia? I, dread queen. Where? Madam, in Rome. I looked her in the face and saw her led between her brother and Mark Antony. Is she as tall as me? She's not, madam. Did Stira speak? Is she shrill-tongued or low? Madam, I heard her speak. She is low-voiced. That's not so good. You cannot like her long. Like her? Or oh, this is impossible. I think so, Charmian. Down of tongue and dwarfish. <laughs> what majesty is in her gait? Remember, if ever you looked on Majesty. Oh, she creeps. Is this certain? Or I have no observance. Three in Egypt cannot make better notes. Is very knowing, I do perceive. There's nothing in her yet. The fellow has good judgment. Excellent. Guess at her years, I pretty. I don't know. She was a widow. <laughs> widow, charming her. I do think she's thirty. Now her face in mind. It's long or round? Or round, even to faultiness. For the most part, too, they are foolish that are so. Her hair, what color? Blonde. Brown, madam. And her forehead, as low as she would wish it. There's gold for thee. Thou must not take my former sharpness ill. I will employ thee back again. I find thee most fit for business. Go make thee ready. Our letters are prepared. A proper man. Indeed, he is so. Why do you think by him this creature's? Nothing. Nothing, madam. The man hath seen some majesty and should know. Hath he seen majesty? I sit else defend and serving you so long.
all may be well enough. This will sometimes divide me from your bosom. Well, which time before the gods, my knees shall bow my prayers to them for you. My Octavia. Read not my blemishes in the walls of poison. I have not kept my square, but that to come shall be done by the rule. Good night, sir. Good night, dear lady. Very many times. <laughs> now, Sirrah, you do wish yourself in Egypt? Would I had never come from thence. Nor you. Are you to Egypt again? Say to me whose fortune shall rise higher, Caesar's or mine? Caesar's. Antony, stay not by his side. Thy spirit is high, unmatchable, where Caesar's is not. But near him, thy angel becomes a feared, overpowered. Therefore, make space enough between you. Speak this no more. To none but thee. No more, but when to thee. If thou dost play with him at any game, thou art sure to lose. And of that natural luck he beats against the odds. I say, thy spirit is all afraid to govern thee near him. But he away, is noble. Get thee gone. Say to Ventidius, I would speak with him. He has spoken true. The very dice obey him. And in our sports, my better cunning fails under his chance. Ventidius! If I lose mine honor, I lose myself. Sir? You must to Parthia. Your commission's ready. My purposes do draw me much about. Your win two days upon me. Sir, good success. Though I make this marriage for my peace, in the east my pleasure lies.
You stayed well by it in Egypt. Yes, sir, we did. Eight wild boars roasted whole at breakfast and with twelve persons there? We had much more. The rare Egyptian woman. She's the most triumphant lady, if we put be square to her. Oh, when she first met Mark Antony, she pursed up his heart. Upon the river Sydney, sir. There she appeared in triumph. I'll tell you. The barge she sat in, like a burnished throne, burned on the water. The poop was gold. Purple the sails and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them. My oars were silver, which to the tune of flutes kept struck, and made the water which they beat to follow faster, as amorous of their strokes. And for her own person, it beggared all description. She did lie in her pavilion, cloth of gold or tissue, or picturing that Venus where we see the fancy of work nature. On each side of her stood pretty dimpled boys like smiling cupids, with diverse colored fans, whose wind did seem to glow the delicate cheeks which they did cool, and what they undid, did. Rare for Antony. A gentleman. Like the Nariety, so many mermaids tended her in the eyes and made their bends adorings. At the helm, a seeming mermaid steers. The silken tackles swell with the touches of those flower-soft hands that yearly frame the office. From the barge, a strange, invisible perfume hits the sense of the adjacent wharfs. The city casts her people out upon her, and Antony enthroned in the marketplace did sit alone whistling to the air which but for vacancy had gone to gaze on cleopatra too and left a gap in nature oh royal witch she made great caesar lay his sword to men <laughs> now antony must leave her utterly never he will not age cannot wither her no custom stale her Infinite variety. Other women cloy the appetites they feed, but she makes hungry where most she satisfies. For vilest things become themselves in her. Let the holy priests bless her when she's wanton. to my heart. I should call thee castaway. You have not called me so, nor have you cause. Caesar's sister, the wife of Antony, is come a market maid to Rome. Good my lord. My dearest sister, the adulterous Antony has turned you off. Do not say so, my lord. I have eyes upon him. 
that his affairs come to me on the wind. Where is he now, my lord? In Athens? No, my most wronged sister. Cleopatra has nodded him to her. In contempt of Rome, he's done all this and more. In Alexandria, in the marketplace, Cleopatra and himself in chairs of gold were publicly enthroned. And to her he gave the establishment of Egypt, made her absolute queen. This in the public eye. In the common showplace where they exercise. Let Rome be less informed. The people know it and have now received his accusations. Who does he accuse? Caesar. For having Pompey slain in Sicily, we had not given him his share. And then does he say he lent me shipping unrestored? Lastly, he frets that Lepidus should be deposed, and being that we detain all his revenue. Sir, this should be answered. Tis done already, and the messenger gone. I have told him, for what I have conquered, I grant him part, but in his conquered kingdoms, I demand the like. He'll never yield to that. No must not then be yielded to him this. He has given his empire up to a whore. Our world. You have a pair of wolves. No more. And throw between them all the food you have. For one will tear the other. <laughs> They doubt it not. Why? Why? You're against my being in these wars. You say it is not fit. Where is he? Is it? Is it not denounced against us? Why should not we be there in person? Your present needs must puzzle Antony. Take from his heart, take from his brain, from his time what should not then be spared. To set in Rome. But Mardian, the eunuch, and your maids manage this war. Sink Rome, and there comes rot that speak against us. The charge we bury the war. And as the ruler of my kingdom will appear there for a man, speak not against it, I will not stay behind. Nay, I have done. Here comes the emperor. Is it not strange, Kennedy, that from Tarentum and Brundusium he could so quickly cut the Ionian Sea and take in Torium? You have heard answers. Larity is never more admired than by the negligent. The rebuke, which might have well become the best of men, to taunt its slackness. Cavidius, we will fight with him by sea. By sea? What else? Why will my lord do so? Or that he dares us to it. Uh -huh. So if my lord dared him to single fight. Aye. And to wage this battle at Barsalia, where Caesar fought with Pompey. For these offers, which serve not for his vantage, he shakes off, and so should you. Your ships are not well manned. Your mariners are teamsters. In Caesar's fleet are those that often have against Pompey fought. Their ships are yeah, yours heavy. No disgrace shall fall you for refusing them at sea, being prepared for land. By sea, by sea. Most worthy sir, you bear in throw away the absolute soldiership you have by land. Distract your army of warm-up footmen. Quite forgo your own renowned knowledge and give yourself a chance. I'll fight at sea. I have sixty sails, Caesar, none better. We should fail, we then can do it on land. Cavidius, our nineteen legions you shall hold by land and our twelve thousand horse. Go to our ship. Oh no, old soldier. Emperor, do not fight by sea. Trust not the rotten planks. Do you misdoubt this sword? Let the Egyptians and the Phoenicians go a-ducking. 
We are used to conquer standing on the earth and fighting foot to foot. Right away. I think I'd be the right. Soldier, thou art. Our leaders led. We are women's men. Till we have done at sea. Do not exceed the prescript of this scroll. <laughs> Our fortune lies upon this jump.
Retire! We've engaged ourselves too far! Chance of Antony? Though my reason sits in the wind against me.
man bids me tread no more upon it. It is a shame to bear me. I have lost my way forever. Leave me. Fly. Make your peace with Caesar. Fly. Not I. Be gone! Are you here, sir? God! Madam. Madam. Good Empress. Sir. Sir, the Queen. Forgive my fearful sails. I little thought you would have followed. Egypt, thou knewest too well my heart was to thy rudder tied by the strings and thou shouldst tow me after. Thou knewest. Call my from the bidding of the gods command me. Oh, my pardon. Now I must to the young man send humble treaties, dodge and falter in the shifts of lowness. I have the bulk of the world played as I pleased, making and marring fortunes. You did know how much you were my conqueror, that my sword made weak by my affection would obey it in all cause. Oh, my God. Fog not a tear, I say. One of them great soul that is won and lost. Come, give me a kiss. Even this repays me. Love, I am full of relief. Some wine here, Ross! Fortune knows me scorn the most, when most she offers me those. Come from Anthony. Know you him? Caesar, tis his schoolmaster. An argument that he is plucked when here he sends her poor opinion of his wing. He had superfluous kings for messengers not many moons gone by. Approach and speak. Uh, 
such as I am, I, I come from Antony. I was of late as petty to his ends as is the morn dew on the myrtle leaf to his grand sea. Uh, uh, Lord of his fortunes, he salutes thee and requires to live in Egypt, uh, which not granted, he lessens his requests and to thee sues to let him breathe between the heavens and earth, and private man in Athens. For Antony, I have no ears to his requests. The queen of audience nor desire shall fail, so she from Egypt drive her old disgraced friend or take his life there. So to them both. That is. Phidias? Phidias, now it is time to dispatch from Antony, win Cleopatra. Promise and in our name what she requires. Add more as an invention offers. Women are not in their best fortune strong, but once will purge the ne'er touched virgin. Try thy cunning, Phidias. What shall we do, Inabarbus? Think and die. Is Antony or we at fault in this? Antony only. That would make his will lord of his reason. What do you fear from that great face of war? Why should he follow? The itch of his affection should not then afflict his captainship. At such a point, when half to half the world opposed, he being the sole question. <laughs> Shame no less than what is lost, of course, your flying flags and leave his navy gazing. That's his answer. Aye, my lord. The queen shall then have courtesy, so she will yield us up. He says so. Let her know it. To the boy Caesar, send this grizzled head, and he will fill thy wishes to the brim with principality. That head, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> Sell him again! Tell him he wears the rose of youth upon him, from which the world should note something particular. His coin, ships, legions may be a coward, whose ministers would prevail under the service of a child as soon as in the command of Caesar. I dare him, therefore, to lay his gay caparisons apart and answer me decline, sword against sword, ourselves alone. I'll write it. Follow me. Yeah. Like enough. High battled Caesar will unstate his happiness and be staged to the show against the swordsman. Caesar, you have subdued his judgment too. Madam, a messenger from Caesar. God, no more ceremony. See, my charming. Against the blown rose may they stop their nose that kneeled unto the bud. Admit him then. My honesty and I begin to square. The loyalty well held to fools doth make our faith mere folly. That can endure to follow with allegiance a fallen lord, does conquer him that did his master conquer. Caesar's will. Here to part. None but friends, say boldly. So happily are they friends to Antony. He needs as many, sir, as Caesar has, or needs not us. So.
Thus, then, thou most renowned. Caesar entreats not to consider in what case thou standst. Further, then he is Caesar. Go on. Right, royal. He knows that you embrace not Antony as you did love, but as you feared him. Oh. The scars upon your honor, therefore, he does pity as constrained blemishes, not as deserved. He is a god and knows what is most right. Mine honor was not yielded, but conquered nearly. Sure of that, I'll ask Antony. Shall I say to Caesar what you require of him? It much would please him that of his fortunes you should make a staff to lean upon. And it would warm his spirits to hear from me you had left Antony and to put yourself under his shroud, the universal landlord. What's your name? My name is Thidius. Most kind messenger. Say to great Caesar this in deputation. I kiss his conquering hand. Tell him I am prompt to lay my crown at his feet and there to kneel. Tell him from his all-obeying breath I hear the doom of Egypt. It is your noblest course. Give me grace to lay my duty on your hand. Your Caesar's father oft, when he hath mused of taking kingdoms in, bestowed his lips on that unworthy place. Approach there. What are you, fellow? One that but performs the bidding of the fullest man. And worthiest to have command obeyed. You will be whipped. You dog. Your gods and devils, authority melts for me. Not late when I cried, oh, like boys under one must, kings would start forth and try your will. Have you no ears? I am Anthony yet. Take hence this jack and whip him. Moons and stars, whip him. Well, with twenty of the greatest tributaries that do acknowledge Caesar, should I find him so saucy with the hand of she here? What's her name, since she was Cleopatra? Whip him, fellows, till like a boy you see him cringe his face and whine aloud for mercy. Mark Anthony! Take him away! Mark Anthony! Be whipped, bring him again! This jack of Caesar shall bear us an errand to him. You were half blasted ere I knew you. Have I my pillow left unpressed in Rome to be abused by one that plays with jackal? Good my lord! You have been a boggler ever! I found you as a morsel cold upon dead Caesar's trencher. Nay, you were a fragment of Nea's Pompey's. Besides what hotter hours are registered in vulgar fame you have luxuriously picked out. Wherefore is this? And a fellow that would take rewards and say, God quit you, be familiar with my playfellow, your hand. Is he equipped? Found my lord. Cried he and begged a pardon. He did ask favor. Okay. If that your father live, let him repent you were not made his daughter. And be you sorry to follow Caesar in his triumph since you've been whipped for it. Henceforth, the white hand of a lady fever you. Trick you to look on. Get you back to Caesar. Tell him your entertainment. Look, you say he makes me angry with him, for he seems proud and disdainful, harping on what I am, not what he knew I was. He makes me angry! At this time, most easy it is to do it. When my good stars, they were my former guides, had empty left their orbs and shot their fires into the abysm of hell. Bring them last! Have you done yet? Don't let us, Caesar, would you mingle eyes with that? Cold-hearted towards me. 
oh dear if i be so from my cold heart let heaven engender hail <laughs> let the first stone dissolve my life together with my brave egyptians all lie graveless <laughs> till the flies and gnats of nile have buried them for prey oh, i'm satisfied Caesar comes near to Alexandria, where I will oppose his fate. I'm forced by land is doubly held. Our shattered navy too is knit again and sails threatening most sea life. Where hast thou been, my heart? Here, lady, if from the field I shall return once more to kiss these lips, I will appear in blood. I and my sword will, and our chronicle will beat them to their bits. What, girl? No grave is something mingled with our younger brown, yet can we still get gold for gold of youth? There's hope in yet. That's my brave lord. Let's have one other gaudy night. Call to me all my sad captains. Fill our bowls once more. Let's mark the midnight bell. We will yet do well. Come on, my queen, they're sapping yet. The next time I do fight, I'll make death love me. Now oh, you'll upstairs the lightning. Furious is it frightened out of fear. In that mood, the dove will pet the falcon. But I see still a diminution in our captain's brain restores his heart. When valor preys on reason, it eats the sword it fights with. I must seek some way to leave him. calls me boy and chides as he had power to beat me out of Egypt. Dares me to personal combat, Caesar to Antony. Let the old ruffian know I have many other ways to die. When one so great begins to rage, he's hunted even to fall him. Give him a breath. Let our best heads know that tomorrow the last of many battles we mean to fight. Within our files, there are of those that serve Mark Antony, but late enough to fetch him in. See it done, and feast the army. There's food to do it, and they have earned the waste. Poor Antony. In a barbers. Sir? He will not fight with me, old friend. Why should he not? He is twenty men to one. Tomorrow's soldier will fight by land. I live and bathe my dying honor and the blood shall make it live again. Well, you fight well. I'll strike. And cry, take all. Well said. Come, give me a hand. You've been rightly honest. I saw your hands. You've served me well. And kings have been your fellows. What do you mean, sir? To make your followers weep? Good friendly night. Tomorrow is the day. Is well. 
your blood, lads. You that will fight, follow me close. I'll bring you to it. Call Verena, Barbus. Sir, he shall not hear me. What say you? He is with Caesar. Sir, his chests and treasure he has not with him. Is he gone? Most certain. Go here, us. Send his treasure after him. Do it! Detain no jot, I shall add you. Write to him, I will subscribe. Gentle adieus and greetings. Say I wish he'd never find more cause to change your master. Dispatch! My fortunes have corrupted honest men. In a barbers. goes forth gallantly, that he and Caesar might determine this great war in single fight. Then, Antony, and now, Go forth, Agrippa, and begin the fight. Our will is Antony be took alive. Make it so known. Either I shall. The time of universal peace is near. Prove this a prosperous day. The three not twelve shall bear the olive freely. Mark Antony, I serve. He was my master. It pleased you to take me to you, as I was to him. So I'll be to you. In Obamas, Antony has after you sent all your treasure. The messenger is at our tent, seen now, unloading of his mules. I give it to you. Mark not, in Obamas, I tell you fool. I am alone, the fellow of the earth. Tomorrow, soldier, we'll fight by land. Oh, Antony. I fight against you. You'll be rudely honest. You've served me well. I will go seek some ditch when to die.
Spaniel be at heels to whom I gave their wishes. Melt on blossom and trees. Let the Lord fly. Why is my lord in I will skip thee, my deserving. Fellow Caesar's chariot, let him hoist the young. Help me, my women. Help me. Yourself. Send him word you're dead. Guardian, go tell him I have slain myself. Say that the last I spoke was Antony. I bet forth my wars and called them home. Whose bosom was my crowned, my chief end, like a right gypsy, as at first and loose, beguiled me to the very heart of Rulos. <laughs> oh, dear us.
Sometimes we see a cloud that's dragonish, a vapor sometimes like a bear or lion, a towered citadel, a pendant rock, a forked mountain or blue promontory with trees upon that nod onto the world and mock our eyes with air. You've seen these signs? Aye, my lord. They are Black Vesper's pageants. My lord. That which is now a horse, even with a thought, the wind dissolves and leaves it indistinct. As water is in water. It does, my lord. Hear us, your captain is even such a body. Here I am, Anthony, yet cannot hold this visible shape. My knave, I made these wars for Egypt and the queen, whose heart I thought I had, for she had mine. my sword. No, Anthony. She's betrayed me. She shall die. Death of one person can be paid but once. What you would do is die. The last she spoke was Anthony. Your name is buried in her. Dead then. Dead. Anam, Eros. The long day's task is done and we must sleep. That you depart here safe does pay your labor richly. Go! Shield of Ajax cannot keep the battery from my heart. A peace, heroes. A peace. No more a soldier. on flowers we'll hand in hand and with our sprightly sport make the ghosts gaze. Dido and her Aeneas shall want troops and all the haunt the hours. Come, Eros! Eros. What would, my lord? Cleopatra died, I have lived in such dishonor that the gods did test my baseness. I, that with my sword quartered the world and our green Neptune's back with ships made cities, to condemn myself to lack the courage of a woman. You are sworn, Eros, that when the time should come, which now is come indeed, I might command you then would kill me. Do it. That time is come. You strike not me, to Caesar you defeat. Put color in your cheeks. The gods withhold me. Eros, would you be taken to great Rome and see your master thus with bound arms bending his neck before the wheeled seat of fortunate Caesar? I would not see it. Come then, 
or with a wound I must be cured. Now draw this sword. Oh, sir, pardon me. When I did set you free, did you not swear to do this when I bade you? Do it at once, or your preceding services are all but accidents, unpurposed. For me, then, that noble countenance. So? Hear us. My captain. My dear master. Let me say before I strike. Farewell. Escape the sorrow of Antony's death. I follow his fly. Say what has come to pass, fearing since how it might work has sent me to proclaim the truth. But I am come too late. Too late. The star is fallen, sir. You may not live. Please. 
is your fate to grace it with your sorrow. We welcome that which comes to punish us. And bear it lightly. You have my thanks for all. Sing! 
my women. The crown of the earth did melt. My lord. Withered is the garland of the wall. The soldier's pole is fallen. <laughs> Young boys and girls are level now with men. The odds is gone. <laughs> and there is nothing left remarkable beneath the visiting room. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> Madam, who is Acerus? No more seen a woman. And commanded by such poor passion as the maid that makes and has the meanest choice. It will happen me to throw my scepter at the injurious of gods. To tell them this world did equal theirs till they had stolen our jewel. <laughs> our women were in love. Our lamp is spent, it's out. What are you? What you say? I say, O oh Caesar, Antony is dead. The breaking of so great a thing would make a greater crack. The round world would have shook lions into civil streets and citizens to their dens. He is dead, Caesar. By that same hand that writ his honor in the acts it did. This is his sword. Behold his blood. Look, you said, friends. The gods rebuke me. But it is tidings to wash the eyes of kings. Caesar is touched. When such a spacious mirror is set before him, he needs must see himself. I have followed thee to this. We could not stall together in the whole world. Whence are you? Poor Egyptian yet. Queen Cleopatra can find in all she has her monument. Of thy intense desires instructions. She soon shall know. Proculeus? Caesar. Being fortune, he's but fortune's name. Caesar sends greetings to the Queen of Egypt. He bids you study on what fair demands you mean to have him grant you. If your master would have a queen, his beggar, you must tell him I beg a kingdom. This I'll report you, lady. Have comfort. For I know your plight is pitied of him that caused it. Yeah. Hold, oh, bloody lady, hold! Do not yourself such wrong. You are in this relief, but not... Come! Huh? Where art thou left? Come! 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 
sleep in. So, no eat. I love drinks, so I love sleep neither. This mortal house I ruin to Caesar what he can. Yeah. Oh. To Caesar, I shall speak what you will please. I would die. Most noble Empress, you have heard of me. I cannot tell. Assuredly, you know me. What's your name? My name is Proculeus. Antony did tell me of you. Let me trust you. I do not greatly care. I have no use for trusting. Madam. No matter, sir. What? what I have heard of men. I dreamt there was an emperor, Anthony. Another sleep that I might see but such another man. If it might please you. Space was as the heavens, and there in stuck a sun and moon that kept their course and lighted the little home. The earth. Most sovereign creature. His legs bestrip the ocean. His reared arm crested the world. His voice was propagated as all the tuned spheres. And that of friends. But when he meant to quail and shake the orb, he was as rattling thunder. For his bounty, there was no winter in it. And autumn it was that grew the more by reaping. In his livery walked crowns and crownets, realms and islands, for his plates dropped from his pocket. Cleopatra. Think you there was, or might be such a man as this I dreamt of? Gentle madam, no. You lie up to the hearing of the gods. Hear me, good madam. Your loss is as yourself great. I thank you, sir. Know you what Caesar means to do with me. I am loath to tell you what I would you knew. I pray you, sir. Though he be honorable. He'll eat me then in triumph. Madam, he will, I know it. Which is the Queen of Egypt? Arise, we shall not kneel. I pray you, rise. Rise, Egypt. Sir, the gods will have it thus. My master and my lord, I must obey. Take to you no hard thoughts. What injuries you did us, we remember as things but done by chance. Soul, sir, of the world. Cleopatra, know that if you apply yourself to our intents, which towards you are most gentle, you shall find a benefit in this change. But if you take Antony's course, you shall bereave yourself of my good purposes. I'll take my leave. And may through all the world tis yours, and we your signs of conquest shall hang in what place you please. No, dear queen. 
our care and pity is so much upon you that we remain your friend and so adieu. my master and my lord not so adieu He words me that I should not be noble to myself. What think you? You an Egyptian puppet will be shown in Rome as well as I. Mechanic slaves with greasy aprons shall uplift us to the view. Good lady. It is most certain. Good comedians will stage our Alexandrian revels. Antony shall be brought drunk and forth. And I shall see some squeaking Cleopatra boy, my greatness in the posture of a whore. I'll never see it, for I'm sure my nails are stronger than my eyes. That's the way. Finish, good lady. The bright day is done, and we are for the dark. Show me my women like a queen. Go fetch my best attires. I am again for Sidness to me, Mark Antony. Good eyes, good girl. And when thou hast done this too, I'll give thee leave to play till doomsday. Bring our crown and all. <laughs> Bring me liberty. My resolution's placed. Now the fleeting moon. No planet is of mine. Hast thou the pretty worm of Nilus there that kills and pains not? Truly. I have him. His biting is immortal. Rememberest thou any that have died, or? Very many. Men and women, too. Indeed, there is no goodness in the world. Take thou no care. It shall be heeded. Get thee gone. Yes, Vosu. Farewell. I wish you all joy of the world. Give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. Now no more the juice of Egypt's crepe shall wash this lip. Methinks I hear Antony call. I see him rouse himself to praise my noble act. I hear him mark the lack of seas, which the gods give men to excuse their after wrath. Husband. I come. And air. My other elements I give to base a life. Have you done? Come then. Kind someone. Madam. Dost 
to lie still. That tells the world it is not worth leaving. mortal wretch. With thy sharp teeth this not intrinsic of life at once untied. <laughs> Couldst thou spring that I might hear thee call great Caesar as unpoisoned. O oh, eastern star, Please, please. Dost thou not see my baby at my breast? Break. <laughs> Break. That sucks the nerves to sleep. As sweet as warm, as gentle. Oh. Anthony, Anthony. In this vile world, now boast thee death. In thy possession lies a less unparalleled. Thy crowns arrive, I'll mend it. And then, hey. Where is the queen? Speak softly. We come out. Caesar have sent. Too slow, messenger. Too sure, an augur. That you did fear is done. Bravest to the last, she leveled at our purpose in being royal, took her own way. She looks like sleep. As she would catch another Antony in her strong toil of grace. Take up her bed. She shall be buried by her Antony. No grave upon the earth shall clip in it a pair so famous. Thank you. 